Uh, my name is Randall Alcorn. I am a fish and wildlife biologist. So our mission statement is to conserve, protect, and enhance Kentucky's fish and wildlife resources to promote better opportunities for hunting, fishing, uh, trapping, uh, boating, and uh, you know wildlife viewing and any other related activities. Um, kind of the history, I, I'll go into it a little bit, you know, in a nutshell. Um, there's actually a link on the website for uh, that talks about the history of fish and wildlife, but essentially. In the early 1900s, um, a guy by the name of Quincy Ward had an idea that he wanted to start an organization that relied pretty much on the user fees uh, from Kentucky hunters, uh, the license and fees that they that they purchased to, you know, hunt the game. Um, so that went through, and then in 1944, um, it kind of did a little bit of reorganization and we got the Kentucky wildlife uh, name that we have today, and it's been acting uh, under that statue uh, as it is today. Um, our reason, our uh, funding comes from, uh, like I said, state license fees and uh, the permits that you buy as a hunter um, to you know, hunt game and um, for tags. Uh, we also have other opportunities um, through non-game with our uh, Kentucky wild program. Um, that's a program that just focuses on non-game species. Um, those are memberships. Um, those memberships, those fees go towards programs that help uh, non-game species uh, conserve those. And then we also get our funding through certain sources of federal grants. Um, again, if you go to the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife website, um, there is a complete list of all the funding sources that we have and that we get um, through federal and state. Some of the programs we have, um, you know, kind of run through our private lands biologists. Um, those private lands biologists have opportunities to provide resources as seed or herbicide for woodland owners that they can actually go out and do practices on their own. Uh, small examples, um, if we're talking large scale, um, we typically run through federal programs like NRCS uh, that focuses more on, on woodland owners and we kind of partnership with them and to giving them plans so that you can go forward with a federal application to get cost share to implement those plans. Uh, things we have for that are, you know, early successional habitat, you know, programs, uh, rough grouse programs, um, and then just um, general woodland species altogether. Um, but that's pretty much our organizations that we work with to get funding to help woodland owners. So if you've contacted a private lands biologist and uh, you know we've made a trip out to your property, um, it helps us if you provide a map, um, kind of your boundaries, so we know what we're working with, and um, also the surrounding properties around you, just you know, so we can kind of take it all in. Um, because again, we're not just managing your hundred acres, for example, we're managing everything around you as well um, to kind of critique a management plan that suits your property. Um, so the first thing we do is, is you know we'll go with you and walk through your property. Uh, have you tell us your management goals, whether it's you want to see more deer, more turkey, uh, you maybe get, want to get more speci species specific, um, like grouse, uh, and then we critique a plan to help suit those management goals. If you want, say for example, more whitetail deer, um, you know, there's a lot of opportunities that we can provide, and as well as demonstrations to show you how to get different habitat settings um, to promote more whitetail deer. Um, just for example, if you've got 100 acres and everybody around you's got you know 1,000 acres and it's all the same, uh, there's no distinct specialized habitat that's going to attract deer to your property versus somebody else's property. So those are things we kind of look for, whether it's creating bedding habitat or more foraging opportunities. Uh, if you want you know rough grouse, for example, uh, that species is a general uh, specialist species in that you have to create early successional habitat in order to promote more population growth. Uh, so those are the things to kind of consider as you're thinking about your management plan. Um, saying that, we will work with you and we will actually provide maps uh, showing where practices can be implemented to get the best out of those. We'll even practice them out or schedule them out in different ye years so you you know, don't feel like you have to do everything once. We'll work with you, like I said, to show demonstrations, uh, to show you how to best complete those practices and get the best out of that, uh, 
goal that you're looking for. So the best way to get a hold of us is to go to the Fish and Wildlife website. Um, at the top, there is a bar that says contact us. Click on that. It'll take you to another page. Um, and on the left side, you'll see a drop down menu. And what that menu is, it's all the counties in Kentucky. Select your county. It brings a list up of every professional that works in that county that is involved with fish and wildlife from private lands biologists, fisheries, game wardens, and so forth. Um, click on that private lands biologist and set up what's called a technical guidance visit they'll get an email and a request uh, that they need to come out to your property. Now for a technical guidance visit, there is a 25 acre uh, minimum. You know, you have to at least have 25 acres before we can come out. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. However, if you decide to go through programs like NRCS and go through an application, um, at that point, you know, as again, as we work with uh, NRCS, we can come out for acres that are less than 25. Um, timing wise, uh, typically, it gets busier for us during the fall and spring seasons because we have a lot of the, uh, the, the big game seasons are going on, so that uh, it's taking a lot of our time up. Um, so, you know, if, to get the, the, the quickest visit, um, you know, summertime months are the best. Um, but again, just go through there and um, fill out a request form from a private lands biologist, and then you'll get a call or email from them um, requesting a visit to your property. You know, as a woodland owner, um, you know, you have your property, with, like I was mentioned before, you have property that surrounds you. So don't just think as you're managing your own property, but you're looking at the whole landscape around you. Um, you know, things that you may be doing on your property may be different from somebody else. Um, and those are just things to keep in mind. You know, it, it, the acreage really doesn't matter as far as a management perspective. Any kind of management you do is gonna benefit some sort of wildlife species. Um, whether it's your target species you're after, or it may be a non-target species, but any kind of management you do is going to help those wildlife species. Um, and just think about the kind of management you want to do. Um, you know, some people don't like to log, and that's perfectly fine. That's a management decision. Whether you log or you don't log, you're making a management decision. Uh, if you want more specialized species, you know, those require a little bit more intense management. If you want a more general species, you know, that requires not as much intense management, but you still have to do some things. And uh, as far as forest health, you want to just, you know, kind of walk over your property. I suggest that to all landowners, just every now and then take a trip through your property and notice what's going on. Notice if you're getting invasive species encroaching into your wildlife or to your uh, forest and see if that's something you need to catch before it starts taking over the understory and really uh, disavow you your forest uh, property.